In July 2005, 25 Hlingit, Haida, and Shimshan elders gathered in Juneau, Alaska to speak and listen and meet with one another, to tell stories about their lives, their clans, their nations, and their land. Stories about embracing family and community wellness. The year before, these same elders had met to agree upon a common set of traditional tribal values. Those values were then taken to the 69th Annual Delegates Assembly of the Tribe and unanimously adopted. They are as follows. Discipline and obedience to the traditions of our ancestors. Respect for self, elders, and others. Respect for nature and property. Patience. Pride in family, clan, and traditions is found in love, loyalty, and generosity. Be strong in mind, body, and spirit. Humor. Hold each other up. Listen well and with respect. Speak with care. We are stewards of the air, land, and sea. Reverence for our Creator. Live in peace and harmony. Be strong and have courage. These are the stories they told. When I was born in Hood Bay, my, my mom's uncle came to see her, William Peters. He asked her, is that a boy? She said, yeah. I want him to have my name, Kaskau. I think at that time they are already aware that our culture is drifting away from us because of what he said to my mom. I want him to have it so he can stand up in front of people with my name. Later on, when one of my uncles died, I got, I got his name. Kata. I got this from Peter Dick. Kata. I know all our names are from things that happened. I had a tribal brother, an old old man, George Hobson. When I was in Sitka this one time, he asked me what my name was. I told him, cut down. He said, oh boy. He was going to tell me the story of a time he had a hand-to-hand -hand combat there. But they called him. He had to go somewhere, somewhere and I didn't get that story. Then the last name I got Kakak, no, no human ever had that name because it came from Basket Bay. Kakak, big, big rock, looks like a tunnel when you could, but it's just like a bridge thing. One of my nephews, he dreamt. He dreamt this uh, dream, and after he dreamt it the second time, he asked me, can we give you that name? He dreamt there's a man came into Angu, and he was walking down the street. He came, he came out and asked him, are you looking for somebody? He said, no, I know where I am. I just came to see my grandchildren. My name is Kalkauk. 
So that's the name I have now. Basket Bay, when the story starts before the flood, when they were telling this story to uh, De Laguna, she informed the people that uh, anthropologists say that the world flooded 14,000 years ago. It was after that we were having, we were living in Teslin, that's in Canada. I think we were having a rough time and we were getting, getting tired of eating meat. Some of them have been down in southeast and got a taste of king salmon. Years and years they talked, they finally got started. They came to a mountain, the, uh, the chief said, how about if we camp here? Camping, they stayed there about nine years around the mountain. One of my uncles got the name Shadag. It means around the mountain. From there we went, and when we got, got up against this glacier, some of our people turned back, went back to Teslin. But there we, uh, we were joined by the killer whale people. They live on others, Atlin, Lake Atlin. That's a Tlingit name, the um, Atlin. A is a lake, Tlain, big. They say when they got started from there, they, when they came to this glacier, they were, they were taking some thought on what, how they were going to go. At that time, the killer whale people joined them. Two, two old ladies volunteered to drift under the ice on a raft. They sent a couple young bucks over the over the ice to watch see if they come out. When the old ladies came out from under the ice, they were singing, singing about their experience. From from there, the killer whale they had their own destinations. They say we stopped in Eliza Harbor, not on the, on this side of Admiralty Island. The uh, it wasn't a good harbor for our people, but they say that's where we started building canoes to go on from there. From there, went on the other side. When we uh, got on the other side, there's Wilson's Cove. Our people lived there for a while, and they decided to move again. So I went to Angoon, Basket Bay, Tenakee. The little story I'm going to tell is in uh, keeping with what we were taught. From the time we start walking around, uh, we're taught that everything has a spirit. The water and the fish and the air, animals and the wood. We're taught to be very careful what we say about With all the training we're getting, we still made mistakes. 
this was one of those in Basket Bay our our chief had a little pet it was a beaver this little beaver could talk and really handy with his hands so the uh, when the chief would tell him I want this or do this for me right now so the chief started to give him things. The chief's nephews were getting jealous. So when they'd get in hearing distance of his little beaver, he'd, uh, he thinks he's a pet, he's nothing but a slave. After a while, this, this started really work on little beaver mind. I start to scheme. One of the th attractions that we had in basketball was beautiful sockeyes, a fish stream, good hunting and a big lake in the back. Alongside, in every stream, we'll find a, there's a pool there. Who put them there, I don't know, but they, they say that's where the fish mill around when they come off the ocean, going up to spawn. This little beaver would go there. He started working on an invention had a wood shaft. When it call it quits for the day, it put it up against a tree. Some of the men going up to the lake to hunt or fish, they to pick it up. Look, uh, boy, this is nice. Wonder who's working on this. Hot little beaver. My handiwork, my handiwork, uh, you couldn't do anything like that. One day he came, came to the chief. He said, I made something for you. I'd like you to come up by that ish, the pool when the sun starts to set. We're also taught to be kind of suspicious of things. We're taught the action of animals. So the, the chief told some of the men, go with me up to that. That beaver said, you made a present for me. Well, they went up. As they were walking up, they saw that little beaver sitting there. <coughs> he was singing a spirit song. Yekdashi. When they, when they got close to him, he got up. This little spear he invented But eight years ago, I think it was a, um, George Dalton from Hunan, old man, came to me. He said, he told me we're building two canoes for the Forest Service. One's going to be in Juneau and the other one out at Glacier Bay. He says, what I want, he says, I've been asking around. Where did that little spear come from? All time we start telling the story. The story always ended up in Basket Bay that the little beaver invented this. This spear, my brother-in-law bought me one from the interior, not a showpiece been used. 
That's about, I'd say about seven feet. Maybe. And at the end, it has like a spear there. Then there, it's attached to a, to the stick by, I don't know what the length is on that, but they, my father had a crude one, a little one, when I was growing up. He told me the uh, the one that they really use for, I mean, use all the time during the olden days. When you hit a, hit a seal, a seal has a habit of twirling himself. What happens with this leather hide, you tie himself up. George Dalton told me we want we want per, your permission to put one in each canoe. He said there's going to be a ceremony in Hun at the ANB Hall. The date isn't quite set yet. The governor of Alaska is going to be there. And the big wheels from Washington Forest Service will be there. It's going to be a big ceremony. I told him it would be an honor to have something like that the way you did it. So Huna paid my way to Huna. I have my regalia. Sir Dalton told me, put on your regalia when the time comes to let you know. We want everybody to hear you give us permission to have one of those little spears in the canoe. The, uh, the little beaver was standing there presented to the chief and the chief says, well, it is nice, how do you use it? That little beaver backed away a little bit, hit the chief in the chest. The chief yelled, guy shot, grab him. He jumped in this pool. His beaver always slaps his tail when he's gonna dive. That's what he did and the whole community turned upside down. As unbelievable as this story is when you go to Basket Bay, there's that big rock, the, the arch. <laughs> Everything is upside down, and it left the cavity under the community there. Basket Bay was not a camp. We lived there year-round. In De Laguna's writing, she said the last family to move out of Basket Bay for Angoon was in 1902, so the, so the kids can go to school. One of the, uh, William, William Peter's daughters, daughter's Flora, Flora Gamble, she was born there in 1904. No. Our stories as as much as we believe that other people can snicker when we tell our stories, but there's always signs that shows that these things really happen. When Robert Zuboff died, they turned, he turned all his regalia, the beaver hat, 
over to us. I'll be bring them tomorrow. They want to take a picture of me. You know. The uh, the thing that makes this interesting. I never I never thought about replacing a chief as I was growing up. But now we're finding some interesting things that happen. I uh, I have our migration story in detail that won't have time to tell. Our people up in Teslin. My father-in-law went through there, Judson Brown. He and his brother, they drive white horse, Tesla, and all over. Ah. Uh. 